Alrighty then, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another <laughs> episode. I took a break in between the previous episode because people kept bothering me and wouldn't leave me alone. So I just ended it right then and there, even though I really wanted to play it. But it's late at night, like I said. So if I whisper or anything along those lines, you understand. But it usually sounds loud because I usually have the mic close to my face. Uh, regardless, but it seems like this is an investigation day. So, ah, uh, hmm. Maybe we're going to be teamed up with Veggie? <laughs> Alright, here we go. March 22nd, 5.24pm, right in co-law offices. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! <laughs> there, there, Pearls. I... I can't take it anymore! L look! It, it'll be alright. Uh, everything may still work out. Huh? The condition was that we've had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't because Mr. Uh, Mr. On Guard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. <laughs> Cheer up! Uh, we don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get it. We have to get going. You're right. Mystic Maya is much more in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right, so... Hey, you guys, I ga I'm glad I caught you, pal. Oh, it's Dick. <laughs> hmm, I can't believe a dick walked through my door. That reminds me of a System of a Down song. <laughs> my cock can walk right through the door with the feeling so pure. Uh, Mr. Scruffy Detective? Oh boy, looks like Detective Gumshoe... This has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's look now. Ah, it's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now. I, I came to talk to you, pal. But we're kind of busy right now. Alright. What's up, brother? You gonna give me an update on everything? Nothing about Franziska? Fuck it, right? Um, so what are you going to do from now on? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So do you have any new job lined up yet? Oh, that! Uh, uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? Uh, I don't have anything coming in and all until my next payday. What, what are you talking about? You don't have another payday. I guess that means I'm just have to work here at your place, pal. What? S -s -s Say what? <laughs> You've been searching for things that will prove Mr. On Guard innocent all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna help you out, pal. I've got lots of experience in investigation, and watch over people's places. People's places. And I'm great at making real simple meals, pal. I'll take care of all of it. I'm great at making real simple simple meals, too. A lot of people should. If they don't, I feel bad for you, son. Uh, you got 99 problems and you can't make no... ...bun. Man, that was lame as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's uh, let Mr. Scrappy Detective take all take uh, uh, take care of things. Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, what's your best dish? It's the noodles, pal. <laughs> Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? <laughs> hey, burgers are delicious. <laughs> now noodles, instant noodles. No, I don't like that. It's gross. All right. That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like, uh, he didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. He, he said that? That's horrible. But because of him doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. Miss Andrews' last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony itself, but... I still think there is something fundamentally wrong with, uh, with the whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would she want to... No, I mean, almost need to frame Mr. On Guard. I couldn't figure that out from uh, anything she said that all day. Oh, if you guys are uh, haven't noticed yet, this is still the same day. Ah, uh, BT dubs, as the cool kids say. Then, then you're saying that testimony was a lie. Not a lie, per se. It just feels like 
there's more here than meets the eye. Yeah, Autobots, roll out, brah. Or, that's what Edgeworth would like us to believe. Ah! Edgeworth? <laughs> oh, God. No, whatever. No. I'm not gonna reference the terrible movies. Alright. <clears throat> We're gonna reference the old school cartoons that's still in our hearts. Sorry about that if you heard us skipping anything. Uh, my headphones decided not to work, so, um... That's fun. <laughs> so I, in turn, unplugged my headphones, in turn, making my recording device, well, the thing that I play my game on, uh, turn off and freeze and restart, so that was fun. I forgot it does that. It's been a while since that happened. But my headphones are working now, I just, they, had, they ended up messing up. But anyway, that, that's such a dirty trick. Even that one prosecutor was better than that. From Siska von Karma. Speaking of Miss Von Karma, do you have any uh, more information on her co uh, condition? Was she shot this morning? Ah, Franzka. Ah, uh, Miss Von Karma was shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol pal. But she's gonna be fine, right? <gasps> I mean, Edward said she was in stable condition, but. Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay I'd... and still hanging in there. They should, uh, be done, uh, taking the bullet out, so she's probably resting at the hospital. Which one? What? Are you guys gonna visit her, pal? N no, well, I was kind of thinking about it. Hey, you've actually got a heart, don't ya? Uh, she looked like she was being tortured to death not being able to go to the trial today. So maybe it's good for her if you went to let her, uh, uh, if you went and let her whip you for a bit. Let's go! Uh, let's go! Let her whip us, Mr. Nick! Now, I'm definitely not going. Um, uh, let's see. The name of the hospital... Oh, yeah. The uh, the Hody Clinic. Or the Hottie Clinic. That name sent a chill down my spine. Well, I guess it can't hurt to stand by and say hi. Oh, no. I gotta go to the Hottie Clinic. Oh, great. We're gonna see that guy. I forgot how to do his voice. March 22nd. A uh, hottie clinic reception. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Um, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Mm. Uh, hi. W wait a second, you're... Mm, yes, I'm Director Hootie. <laughs> Why are you still here? Mm, yes. What is it? Mm, can I help you? Uh, you can tell me. Mm, yes. Director Hootie. Edgeworth! Hmm, yes, I'm Director Hootie. <laughs> and you're the man for the morning. Hmm, yes, what is it? Uh -huh. Director, Franziska. How is Franziska von Karma? Hmm, you don't need to worry. Hmm, yes, she's in good hands. Because you see, I'm personally taking good care of him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my gratitude. It looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and a secret. She looks so pitiful, absolutely terrifying, <laughs> yes. But I understand. Yes, her opponent uh, was a gun after all. <laughs> and when I snuck up on a real secret light, so it screamed really loudly. And uh, yes. I see. Uh, but she's really good too. When I do that, she'd whip me with a whip. <laughs> Boy, did I cry like a baby. Oh, yeah. But I think I can get used to it. <laughs> Go back to your room. You're so mean. <laughs> so frisky. My frisky friska. But that's good! <laughs> okay, okay, I mean, yes. It's time for my IV drops, yes. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix, right? Ah, I, I, I knew I shouldn't have come here. Ah. <laughs> uh, those people behind her look really small. Alright, this shooting. I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. Huh. It 
It's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. I even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. But... but that would have been too much. Yeah, I, you looked like you were deathly scared until only a few minutes ago. But I was dragged here by that prosecutor. He even went so far to grab me by the, uh, the wrist the whole way here. I was... it was the only logical course of action given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But... Uh, with me doing so, I find myself having a clean up after you and that irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. Hmm, the deal. Welcome to Good Burger. Do you hate me because I'm black? I. <clears throat> Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got the guilty verdict on Mr. An on guard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have such proof that I made such a deal? Y you're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix, right? If I had been in court today, this trial would be already over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem, whether she had tempered with evidence or not. I have only one objective, to find on guards guilty of murder. The end justifies the mean, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The end justifies the mean. Miss Von Karma, Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then on guard will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she's now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until she, uh, until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person. That is all. But you had to know she was. Ugh! I think Vizzy and I was here are about over. So if you excuse me. What's wrong? What is, why did she cut something cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in the argument. Edgeworth. <laughs> oh, I missed that skull of yours, Edgeworth. Oh, goodness. Today's trial. Uh, what happened today at, tri at trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I knew you knew about Miss Andrew's condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far... Ah, uh, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right. The courtroom is a garden of judgment. I am putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness to do, uh, do the same. It's only natural. <laughs> By the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare of you. Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This... I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! Why, she was playing with this all this time, Edgeworth. You not... can you not see? That card... what in the world is it? You mean this? Listen, right? This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. A special investigation team has existed for a number of years, but a few now know of it. I... understand. Their task is to find the owner of this card. A man called Shelly the Killer. I... just... as his name states, he is a killer. An assassin. I'm the best at that. An assassin?! Picture card added to court record. Ass ass in, huh? Just lame. So who is this Shelly the Killer? The Killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? <laughs> like Monkey D? <laughs> but they're not killers. They're, uh, whatever, fuck it. I'm not even gonna explain. Alright. <clears throat> The name first appeared about a hundred years ago, I hear. 
Shelly is the professional name of the third heir of the D Killer name. So, because of his professional name is Shelly, he leaves cards with a shell on them? He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by, uh, by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it's part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against my, uh, any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is one honorable assassin, assassin with a moral con conscience. I guess that even honorable assassins can exist. So, you think this assassin... You think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelly the killer, huh? My situation. I noticed something at today's trial. You're behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess I should just tell him. Maya... Maya's been kidnapped. K kidnapped? What does this kidnapper want? An acquittal. I, I see, I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. Really? D did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Edgeworth is going to... Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth. I don't need your pity. But Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. We don't have even have a single clue to go on. There's only one way to save her. I, I, I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right. Listen. You need to know something. Juan Correa was killed by Shelly the Killer. And the client who ordered the job is Matt on guard. Your own client. Please stop. I, I, I can't listen to you. I, I, I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you'll need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only as we're only looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelly the Killer. If you take uh, take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Letter of indu introduction. Add it to the court record. Oh, did all my stuff leave? In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again, if anything should happen. Now, if you'll excuse me. So, our actual person who we're defending, our defendant, is actually guilty for once, huh? This is new. Mr. Nick, do you, do you think Mr. On Guard hired an assassin? No way. I mean, he, he doesn't have a psych lock. Yeah, I guess not. Maya, please, all I ask is you to make it home, safe and sound. Ah, we're back here. All right, let's see what's going on. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even though he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that up, like how Nick does with everything in court. <laughs> I like that. I like that little shot. Somewhere, Nick, Nick is uh, Nick's nose itches. He's like, well, what? what is it? Uh, is it nose? No, no whatever. Anyway. No, it's if you accidentally say the person's name. Uh, they're talking about you. Anyway, let's try the card trick with this card I just found. Click! Sounds like I got that door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. Alright, so now we finally got... Um, we got something. We got... We, we finally got something, people. We're just gonna see the continuation of this, hopefully. Oh, look at the little bears. Oh, you see that little bear? Maybe the dude was getting the bears, right? And the bears 
people were like freaking the fuck out with the bears, right? He was freaking, he's like, why are they sending me the bears? He needs to get out of here. And that's his calling card to the victims that he's gonna get ya. What is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'm worried about later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way, I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. Alright. Alright, hold on, let me... Let me fix my hair. Alright, there we go. My hair. Well, my earbud. Alright. That's right. Uh, what's a figurine doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Hmm, how cute! But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. Ugh, this guy's weird. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. Ah. Who's this? Look at this photograph. Who's that? Is that the one girl? Does she have the profiles? Is that her? I think that is her. Celeste in PAX. There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, looks like something's written here. Let's see. I think it says, with love, Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. Alright. What is this thing? An antenna? I guess. And this is a VCR. There's sure a lot of electronic gadgets here. But what is an antenna doing here? A VCR. For those of you who don't know, they play cassette tapes on them. Yeah. Cool, huh? That was our DVDs back then, you know? And before that, there were, uh, there was different kinds, you know? Different kinds. I believe we still have a beta player. <laughs> what do we need that for? Who knows? Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before. Now, where's the power button? Hmm. <laughs> it's busted. Uh, I would so die happy if, uh, I, I would so die a happy samurai fan. If I ever get to see Nick, uh, Nickel Samurai on a TV like this... <laughs> I, I can't believe I just made a boat joke about dying, all these things considered. Computer. Oh, hey, it's a good pooper. I've never really used one before. Uh, I have no idea where the power switch is on this is, uh, thing is. Drat. Here goes my plan to get to use, uh, use this somehow to get out of here. Yes. <laughs> it turns into a tank. What's this? Is this a doggy door? I just noticed that now. I thought it was just like a light, uh, light shimmering. Uh, locked. Of course. And it doesn't look like I can use the card to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through there. Uh-oh. It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I would suggest you to remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways, you mean? Dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, correct? D -d Dead? I'm almost certain I told you. On our first meeting, I am an assassin. No way. You're lying. I, I mean, an, an assassin. People are not always who they appear to be. Nick! March 22nd, 7.04 p.m. Hody Click, Hody, Hody Clinic Reception. Mr. Nick? Uh-huh. Uh, yes, Pearls. Got uh, caught up in my thoughts about my situation. Mr. Edgeworth's left, you know. I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. On Guard. But I think I should listen to his story one more, uh, to him one more time. All right. Uh, let's get going too. Okay. Where do we gotta go? We gotta go to the detention center. Oh, I guess I'm going here. <laughs> Why did it force me to go here? Do I have anything to talk about right now? I, I de You son of a bitch. Always when I hold down the button too long. No, nothing new here. So let me start a new recording. Uh, let's see. Let's move to the... 
to the... What is it? Detention Center, I believe? Alright, March 22nd, Detention Center. Visitors room. We're gonna have fun here, aren't we? I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Ah! Ah! There's too many questions I need to ask. I I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You missed a right, you say? Oh, yeah, there's a message here for you. A message? It's from Matt on guard. Uh, here you are. What did he write? Is it something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. To the lawyer, dude. I've got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel easy all of a sudden? Oh, uh, Mr. Wright. So, actually, I have a favor to ask of you. I had this cat named Shu. Uh, I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. Uh, you think you could drop by my house and feed, uh, Shu for me, dude? Uh, my house is just a little ways down from the hotel, hi? Right? Then why were you at the hotel? Well, well, yeah, just... That was a dumb answer. He was using it as a changing room, pretty much. But this is terrible! Let's hurry! We have to feed his cat! I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. Matt's note jammed into his pocket. A client request is a request. I guess I should go check up on this cat. <sighs> I don't know how to feel about this. Alright, let's check that note. Look at this letter. Check the note. Please feed my cat, Shoe. My house is just a little ways down from the hotel. Alrighty then. <sighs> Alright, here we go. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. Alright now, Mr. Nick. Let's go look for clues. We have to, uh... We had to for Miss Mystic Maya's sake. You shall not pass. <sighs> Miss Old Bag, don't uh, don't devalue my name and turn it into a gas, you spiky-headed poof. Because of you, I've been made to look like a bad guy again. Although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But when I something's more valuable, I want an Edgy Boy's heart. It's all your fault you've awakened this wild beast inside the old bag. <laughs> Missile bag. Keep your hands off me. The helmet is all right. No air gets in and uh, no air gets out. Um, what does your helmet have to do with anything? I don't think you could give me the move with silly questions. You're going to uh, you're going to defeat me if you want if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. I have a murder. Sorry about that, hold on. Alright. Um. Rat a tat a tat a tat! Ha! You're a million light years too early to be asking me questions, Whippersnap. But light years are distance. I don't. <sighs> ah. Looks like the only way I'm going to get any investigation done is to first do something about the kooky alien. All right, how about today's trial? Um... rat a tat a tat a tat Ha! You're a million light years away from me, you son of a... You're gonna say this for everything you're doing. Whatever. I'm using this so I can go to the, his house. His living room. March 22nd, on guard's mansion, living room. He has a mansion. Ah, sure is dark. I'll go turn on the light. Why is there a motorcycle hanging up there? Wow, so this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's go find a shoe. Shoe the kitty cat. Shoe! Aw, meow! Aw, oh, look at little kitty. I'm gonna pump the fuck out of it, because I hate cats. So I guess this is shoe. 
Ah, what a lovely cat! Hello, Shoe! Meow! <laughs> this cat seems to like pearls. Oh, pardon me. Who's this? Uh... May I help you with something, mister? Oh, uh, we're lawyers, actually. I'm Matt on guard's lawyer. The Masters. Then you must be Mr. Wright. Yes. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet you, wonderful self. I am family butler, John Doe. N nice to meet you. Meow. But he's the killer. Or maybe he has, like, a darker side to him. Who knows? Uh, you must know all sorts of things about uh, Mr. On Guard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of, of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a low servant to speak of the master of his affairs. Uh, how typically butler-like as it were. What was the voice that I gave him? I, I think I gave him this kind of voice. No! I... I gave him... Why? There's no reason for you to be leaving, my dear. Mr. Doe, how long have you served as, as this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say maybe about one year. And, uh... Anything else? No. Not especially... You look at that door over there. You see that door over there on the right? There's a little doggy hole for the kitty. So... Maya's probably there. It's probably in this mansion. No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lonely servant to speak on the... You know? I would've thought Mr. On Guard... Uh, the kind wasn't the kind that... Was the kind to have a maid over a butler. Mmm. Mmm. Uh, this is a very cute cat you got here. It is my duty to take care of them. The master's rather, f uh, a uh, master's rather fancy shoe. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak about some following cat. Well, uh, I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Oh. Well... I'm afraid I must take my leave, uh, of you now. Oh, uh, we should probably get going ourselves. <sighs> so young and it already so accomplished, a master of law. But there is, but there is also a lot to be proud of being a butler, in charge of the house and all. Thank you for your compli uh, compliment, sir. People are always, not always who they appear to be. Now, if you excuse me, Okay, then. Let's look all around here. Oh, there's a giant cooking, uh, hearth? Here. That's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've next not actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Fate Manor, uh, then. I'll show you one, uh, one when you do. Aw, she's so cute. Ah! A giant bicycle is flying through the air! That bicycle pearl is one's where you don't have to pedal and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! But sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. Ah. Way to crush your spirits. It's very comfortable in spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around to have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ah, what is with me and feeling inferior today? I feel that all the time, because I'm a piece of shit. There's a small door in the bottom of the bigger door, Mr. Nick. I bet it's for Mr. On Guard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe? The door, it's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep noisy people like me from entering it. Is, that, is there really nothing we could do here? Ah, uh, there are masks here. Yeah, the one in the middle is the Steel Samurai. The one next to it are the Pink Princess and the Evil Magistrate. 
Uh, they fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Dick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about the show than a kid. Let's see, anything else we could possibly... maybe this? No clues here. No clues here. How about that area right there? There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off there, Mr. Nick. Yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. Oh, well, I guess we got nothing to do here. I don't know where to go. Go back to the hotel lobby? Ah, maybe if I show her this letter I got from Hedgeworth. Um, Miss Oldbag, if you would look at... What? You want me to look at this worthless piece of... Edgy Poo. Uh, is that her perfume, uh, a uh, perfume pheromone d'amour? I smell... Uh... Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Yours truly? Ah, and she's the ladies' man. Hm, that man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Edgy Poot said so, you understand? Letter of introduction given to Miss Oldbag. Actually, that noise that just happened right now scared me. <laughs> the pudding! Alright, I just thought of something I, I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You, uh, you do anything bad, and I won't let uh, let you off the hook. Aw, I thought she was going to shoot her laser. It looks like she was a strong feeling for Mr. Hedgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing going to come out of it. That's so mean, Mr. Neck. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Oh. Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. Um, so... Anyway, let's continue our investigation. Okay. Rata ta 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 What now? One little thing before I forget. You cannot go to On Guard's room today. Why? The police main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? I wonder if they, uh, I wonder if the team, uh, is in charge of the investigation of the killer. So don't get in there. Set one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Wendy Old Bag. Great. Alright. I guess we're good for today. Let's go to Viola Hall. <laughs> March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems bust uh, busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scoring this, uh, for clues about the killer. Food's still here. I want to eat a meal with Mystic Maya again. Yeah, me too. Whenever I watch Mystic Maya eat like she does, it makes me happy about eating and then I can eat a lot. Well, then... How about after we wrap up the case? We all go out for a, a huge 20 course feast. Okay, let's work really hard then. Goodness. I guess we gotta go through the hallway. Oh, the bears are there. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, hallway. Hey, city boy! D Lada, you're still here? Wrecking cars? An investigation photographer eats and stars on our ability to snap up a scoop, eh? Um, this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, like something about, uh, about to happen. But, do you have a camera? Wrecking give. A photographer's gotta have cameras out the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feeding the mouth, do you have mine? Uh, you bread thief? Why can't you drop the thief thing already? 
Got this. Alright, let's see. Night of the Murder. I want to ask you about the Night of the Murder. <clears throat> oh. What you? You really gonna shell out the bucks for uh, for the info I got? Lotta. You were loitering, loitering in the hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kind of, but... Brace yourself, right? Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know. Followed a few stars around. Got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop, <laughs> with a few of them, too. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security lady also wasn't in the hallway the whole time either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came out the uh, who came out and went that night. Why is there a picture? So about that note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that Diddy I wrote. Yeah, can I believe what you written? Yeah, you mean the stuff about Ungar shoving his manager lady on Corita? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I reckon you best not believe that. What? Look, I sorta of wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot uh, It's just a lot of random bold doodlers. Dooders. Hey, uh, uh, what's with ya? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Huh. Hey. Hey, and why do you look like you suddenly got older too, or am I just shrieking here? Um. <laughs> does she, does she change throughout it? I doubt she has, but you know. You know how things are. Or a camera. Ugh, my baby. My $1,600 baby. Ugh, what's with the red-coated prosecutor anyhow? The guy told me it was evidence, and I refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey, uh, you're the red coat friend, ain't you? So put in a few good words for me now, and get it back my camera. You want me to do that? Listen, nag that guy real cool uh, for about five hours and guarantee he'll give it back. Why don't you do it on your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, eh? Um, yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm gonna see you in court tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll see you then. And you there, Lydian. Uh, keep up the good work, huh? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure to bring it right to me, you he Would you please just leave already? Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I guess we got to move to Mr. Horridia's room, which they're only letting us do. <laughs> the bears, tonight you. Alright, March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Horridia's Hotel. What the fuck is this? Oonga, oonga. Mr. Nick. What is that outwardly ghastly moaning? I, I hate evil ghosts! I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a, a demon. Excuse me, watch why you're calling a demon, brat. Ah! Uh, Soinks, it's the alien! Who are you calling an alien? rat a tat a tat a tat Oh, it's just you, Miss Oldbag. What are you doing here? What is wrong with you youngins today? I came down here to pay my respects to the poor one, and you're disturbing me. <laughs> I guess we gotta talk about her. Alright, none of the murder. Alright. Please talk to me about the night of the murder just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by the fraud of photographer and her note. As she was loitering around here with her em embellic look of her on her face. With that embellic look on her face. Okay, got it. Now, hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least uh, make me sound better than that. Oh, alright. 
Now I've seen everything. But you know, I was working the night too, uh, doing my job, minding my own business. No, oh, if you guys are wondering what happened during that quiet thing, I was checking if I could go back in the archives of, you know, reading everything everyone said, but, uh, I can't. Uh, <laughs> I pressed all the buttons except A, which does this. Which I don't know what she just said, because I just skipped it. Great. But you know, I was working the night too, doing my job, minding my own business. So it's not like I had time wasting standing around here the whole night. Alright, memories of Koriria. Koriria. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Koriria. He was the most popular star, you know, especially where it counts in my book. But I heard that he was lagging behind in the polls against Mr. Unmad on guard. Um, well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know. But he is going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at the mountain of presents. It's a show of the, uh, it's to show the mountain of feeling all of all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountains is pretty big and certainly nothing to shake the stick at. Mr. Nick? Huh? What is it, Pearls? The presents are all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. Uh, all of Mr. Kurita's presents from his fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of one without thinking about bears. <gasps> Excuse me, what? How does that make sense? Bears? Why bears? You don't know? When my dear Juan was training, he fought bare-handed with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win. But after the fight, they became friends. Wow! What a heartwarming story. Look, it's just like in those young people's dramas. I can see those two tuckered out. Uh, down by the river going, <laughs> You, you sure? You sure you can fight? You do, bub. You do. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock. So even since then, fans have been giving him uh, bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. Oh. Ugh. I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely 8 o'clock. <laughs> what in the infernal racket? It's one of those presents going off. Sounds like it's a, uh, it's already 8 p.m. Way past your bedtime. Ugh, that startled me. I, I thought I was going to die for a second. 8 p.m.? That's the time when the award ceremony ended at night, remember? Time sure flies. I hardly believe it's been two days since the ceremony. The transceiver. Uh, hello? Hello? This is not a phone. Maya, how is Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? It seems you're not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Wright. I have heard the news. So, what it seemed my present did you no good? No, Mystic Maya! One more day, please. All I ask is for one more day. I'll get enough guilty verdict for sure this time, please. I suppose if I must. I need that acquittal more than anything else. After all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear if she's alright. Alright. Then this is a little. What is with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems bad. Connect. Damn it! Did a transceiver just suddenly break? Excuse me. What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden it became nothing but static. I thought I started a new recording. What the fuck is going on here? This shit's running on 30 minutes. What's going on? 
<laughs> Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Why did this transceiver suddenly break like that? It should probably have an electronic uh, expert look at this. The sooner the better. Where do I go for that? Where the fuck do I go for that? The office, maybe? The, um, the whatchamacallit office. I can't recall what the name is. Damn it, what's the name? <sighs> the law offices. Well, not the right and co law offices. The, um. <sighs> What's the name? I can't recall the name, people. I'm having a bad time right now. Criminal Affairs Department. There we go. Wait, why would we go here? Whatever. We'll do whatever we're here. March 22nd, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Wow, everybody looks really busy with something or another. <sighs> Probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial. Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass the victims list around. Now you're speaking nonsense. There's more than a hundred people out here. Um, Mr. Nick? Is Mr. Ungard really a bad, terrible criminal? Actually, Pearls? Never mind, it sounds like they're working on a different case. Oh. Okay, I guess nothing to really do here. Uh, it's kinda cute. Mr. Nick, what is this stuffed animal's name? That's the Blue Badger! Sorry, I wanted to do this again. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> I like the Blue Badger thing. It looks weird. It doesn't even look like a badger. It looks like a starfish. It looks like the back of a Corsola is on its head. You know? I guess we gotta go to Ride and Call Offices. So my mistake was true. March 22nd, Ride and Call Offices. Hey, welcome back, pal. I thought I, uh, I'd make you a little something for dinner. That, that's nice, thanks. Uh, it's rich man's luxurious full-course meal, out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have time to eat. Oh, uh, hey, you don't have a can opener here, pal. You've gotta be kidding me. And here I thought he had already ripped something up. Oh, uh, I know. There's one, uh, one way I know how to, how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Well... He's here and offering. I wonder what I could try to ask him about. You have nothing. Can you fix my communicator? Uh, the transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick, you should ask Mr. Scrappy Detective about the thing. What thing? Uh, oh yeah, this thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It broke, pal? When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Looks like it's... it looks... Uh, look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Uh, huh? Maybe it fixed itself. That's strange. I'm sure it was making a lot of static noise. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was a electromagnetic interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference? <laughs> I don't know what it is, I just read it in a book, okay? <laughs> um, so what is this electromagnetic interference? It's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone uh, goes, off, uh, goes off next to a computer screen. The stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? Uh, Did it do that back in the day? I'm not exactly sure. Huh? Come poop there? Um, I like when he used a dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh, um, it's like when he used a dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Uh, oh, yes, the TV does that. Hmm. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly like, happy at being able to understand this. So... So... So the room you were in, uh, when the interference to the transceiver happened. There's gotta be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. Something like, uh... Like a listening device or something. Uh, hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Corridia's room, the scene of the murder. What? 
that, that's it. I'm gonna sneak in with, uh, into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. Uh, I'll meet you at the crime scene later, alright? He's gonna sneak into the precinct? Okay. Is he gonna find a dildo in the shower room? <laughs> I know you guys love me for that reference. Alright. <clears throat> Oi, come shoo! Oh yeah, baby. It's investigation time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. <laughs> yeah! You should go too, Mr. Nick. Alright, let's go. To the precinct? Or to the hotel? Well, he's gonna sneak in. Let, let's just... Let's not go with him. How about that? Alright. Alright, let's go to Mr. Hoyer's room. Where do I do these things? This always confuses me. I apologize, everyone. Hallway. Oh. Hoyer's room. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Corridor Hotel Room. Did that pink bear come out of nowhere? I don't know. I, I don't recall a pink bear being there. Alright. <clears throat> hey, you finally here, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. Do you have the, uh, buck sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. And suddenly I'm sta staring at the precinct doors from the outside of me. So, yeah, I, I couldn't get one of the police box beamers. What do you mean you couldn't get it? We need the item! Hey, hey, calm down, pal. They didn't say I didn't get one, just not the police's. Wow, so that's a buck sweeper. Looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, by who? Me, of course. Uh, uh, seeing this sure brings back memories. Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it's just a little run down, but I put my heart and soul into building the puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. Uh, it'll do the job, but... But... But you can't set the sensitivity. So it's going to be about anything that gives off electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? <laughs> well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting the seeking feeling again. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use the baby. It's a listening advice or some sort of bug hidden in the room, pal. So, we're going to find it, right? Right. Now first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, next touch the sweeper and take a real good look around the room with it, pal. You can see how strong the radio waves are in the area by looking at the check gauge. Once you find something that's giving off strong waves, the gauge will change. And when that happens, touch the gauge to, to really give the thing a long, hard stare. There's a lot of things here that's uh, that's going to give off radio waves. So let's just take a good look around at everything and every anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? All right, I'm going to stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? Uh, uh. Oh, I can move it with my mouse. Lamp. Check. Listening device? Nope. There's a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah. And they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know? That's wasteful. Uh, yeah, I'll be more... Uh, con- uh, consensuous from now on, sorry. Is that the remote? A cell phone. Nope, no bugs here. A cell phone? W what? Don't tell me you don't know what a cell phone is. I'm sorry, I've never seen one before. Now that she mentions it... My cell phone couldn't even get any reception while I was staying at Korang Village. And Pearls has never lived outside of the village, so... Well, I guess I can say it's impossible to live without one. Funny how I, how I can't make it go underneath here. Yeah, that's gonna go crazy. Ah, what a lovely bear! Ah! 
<laughs> ah, it's supposed to be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's a robot? It's a real robot? Yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Nick! Yeah? How many horsepowers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um, well, look, it's a bear, so, uh... Um... I guess that's the TV. I don't really think the listening device is in the TV of all places. Looks like the TV was left on and it's now showing an old samurai movie. Yeah, that channel plays all sorts of international movies. As one, uh, as well as domestic ones. You know, every time I watch one of these old movies, I always think, Wow, these Japanese stars are really good at English. Um, yeah. When I grow up, I want to study Japanese. I should probably keep my mouth shut here and not destroy her dream. What's this? Oh! Uh, the water in this is hot. Uh, water pot has run out. I'll get my water for it. Uh, okay, sounds good. Looks like she's gotten all about the thing of looking all about a little bit of table ice. It's probably in one of the bears, right? What's this? It sort of looks like a hot water pot, but... Oh, well, it's kind of like a hot water pot, I guess. But instead of hot water, coffee comes out. Really? D this pot can do that? Um, is there a pot tin, uh, that orange juice just comes out? I don't think there's anything like that, Pearl. Sorry. <laughs> this is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you find one yet? Uh, the listening device, I mean. No, not yet. The bear's eye is... Let's see, let's see... A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some real strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's uh, dig this fella's eye out and <laughs> <We'll laughs> see what's uh, there. N no, you can't such such a violent act. <clears throat> Rip. No. <laughs> She's traumatized now. That's it's a miniature camera, and it looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A watcha by the meter? A transmitter, pal. Oh, I see if there's more high touch stuff. Alright, I guess we talked to him about it. Ooh, the camera. So this tiny thing is a camera? Ow, my back hurts. <laughs> Uh, yep, it's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's a small, high-grade video camera, mostly used in security systems. So it's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with a, within a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is the only camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the taping inside is somewhere else. Somewhere else? The footage is changed to radio waves, and then it's sent to the recorder. So, it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know you're right. Huh, we got a spy camera, so we got the spy stuff going on. This guy, th this D-Killer, Shelly the killer has definitely uh, got something. So, what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends footage to the camera, uh, took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to turn the camera on and record a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yep. Let's see, this looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. Ah, 8 p.m.? How's set a time the award ceremony ended? There's no date set, so it's uh, it's been recording every night, I guess. Okay. Mr. Detective, how long has the bear been here? I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then maybe... Maybe the camera's caught the murder on tape! What? And if I think about the angle the bear is at, 
It's bound to have a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Ah, so this may be the thing that helps. Actually, actually using video evidence instead of pictures. Phoenix Wright, getting with the times, I see. So, there was a camera in the bear's eye. And it was disguised as a present. And I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Correa the present? I, uh, don't know, pal. But, this means that someone out there has got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't that any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can't be set almost anywhere, so that's no real way to find out. Oh. Uh, is there really no way to find out? Stuff bear added to the court record. I got it! What? Hey, pal. Let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go around this uh, to the electronic shops and see if I can find out who bought this. But, but that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. Even I have to search all night, I'll find you, man, pal. Spy camera and transmitter given to Detective Gumshoe, and then he dies, and then we know that he's gone forever. <laughs> There's nothing. Oh no. Oh, yeah, by the way, the investiga it's investigation, investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! Huh, that puppet must be in here. He's gone. Yeah. But Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. I think this is Franziska, yeah? <laughs> Nope, Edgeworth. You have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. Ed Edgeworth, what are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and, and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward one step at a time. I, I see, thanks. Why does Edgeworth has this ability to do so? Just because he's a Von Karma, or... Well, he's not a Von Karma, but, you know, he was, uh, kind of... He was taken in during that time. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Don't take me yet. We still have to find her. So there was a spy camera hidden inside the stuffed animal, huh? You are one lucky man, Mr. Wright. Do you know the stuffed bear's little girl? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> of course not. The maker of the bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade, and there are very few in, uh, that are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with them are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can he really do that, Mr. Nick? Can he really? Well, I, I guess so. <laughs> it's 9 p.m. I think I could still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. Stuff bear snatched up by Edgeworth. See you soon. Right. W wait! Mah. Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But beside that, but beside that, right. Until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with that, this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corridia? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a lot of time left. Find the truth right. Everything begins with the truth. Juan Corita's real killer. Mr. Andrews passed. The kidnapper whose soul con uh, conditions to acquittal for Mr. On Guard. And this card. Shelly the killer. Maya, the only way I could save you now 
is to find out all the answers this case, uh, to the case tonight. I, I don't understand what your, uh, your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. To be continued. Bum bum dee dum bum bum dee dum dum. Well, that is interesting. This is uh, they're definitely setting themselves up to have a really really good case. Definitely like how things turned out in this one. Definitely way the heck more entertaining than what the heck was going on, uh, before that. Uh, you know, uh, was going on with this, uh, all the stuff that was happening. So, yeah. I think that is about it for today. Uh, I'm not the stuff that was happening, but the, you know, the previous case is definitely way better than the previous cases. A uh, little bit more importance to it. It's a little bit more personal matter, which always, always, always makes things more important. But until next time, everyone, my name's Luna. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay frosty.